Challenging the United States has consequences. What we are now seeing is that Emperor Xi is being divested of his clothes one garment at a time. Why do I say that? You know, all this brouhaha about Taiwan, that China considers Taiwan as a part of its territory and that don't play with fire, but you will get singed and don't cross the red line. All that rhetoric, what happened? 24 hours have elapsed since Speaker Nancy Pelosi set foot on Taiwan. Nothing has happened. Why? There is now a slow realization that Emperor Xi is being uh, stripped one garment at a time. Now, the latest situation is that the United States, bipartisan, they have passed an act to help its own semiconductor industry to the tune of $128 billion. The beneficiaries are expected to be companies like Intel, Western Digital, Micron, uh, Texas Instruments, and a whole bunch of semiconductor manufacturers, also global foundries. I can go on and on. A lot of companies that will start to benefit as the United States starts thinking about bringing back the semiconductor fabs, the semiconductor technology back home. This is a very critical component of the overall technological lead for any country in the world. And I'll explain to you why. Semiconductors form the nerve center of all the devices that we consume today. We are living in a connected world. We all have smartphones, multiple smartphones. We have laptops, we have tablets, we have iPads, uh, iPhones, AirPods. All these things are consuming or they are using semiconductor chips. And, and the more miniaturization happens, the smaller these chips have to be. So what has been happening is that there is a technology law called Moore's Law. Moore, Gordon Moore was a founder of Intel. And many years ago, he made the prediction that the chip density will double itself every 18 months. And sure enough, I, it did have that uh, path for many years until it started, the chip density started hitting uh, against the laws of physics. And it became a little bit difficult. Now it doesn't hold good anymore. So now let's just cut to the chase. We have technologies that are in nanometer. What is a nanometer technology? If, if somebody says my foundry has a 10 nanometer process, what does it mean? That means that when you are connecting two nodes inside the chip, you can have the connection to be as narrow as 10 nanometers. I mean, we can't see them with normal eye. You have to use uh, electronic microscope to know that thickness. So to, to be able to do this kind of thinness in the nanometric process, it's a very, very involved process. As someone who has worked in the process field, I can tell you that it is also not an exact science. We are doing a lot of uh, you know trial and error techniques to try and get to our goal. Now, there are two important technologies that are driving this today. One is called deep ultraviolet technology, DUV, and the other one is called extreme ultraviolet technology or EUV. I have worked in the EUV process and I can tell you it is very, very, very complicated. I was very lucky to have been part of this process because it exposed me to so many different facets of science physics, optics, controls, electronics, uh, plasma, all sorts of stuff. And this is this is something that is very unique. It, it symbolizes everything that can be complex about a system. That's what I had the good fortune of working with. Anyway, that kind of made me a little bit more generalized. If you think that I seem to know a lot of in detail, it is because of that exposure, because I understood how systems work, how disparate, uh, engineering fields mesh together to form a very compelling product. Enough about all that. So what is happening now? What is happening is that today there are only two big competing companies that are making these equipment that go into the state-of-the-art fabs. Inside the fab, you would put your design. Who are the ones who are giving their designs? Companies like Qualcomm, companies who make chips, ARM, uh, Intel. Intel has its own fab, but sometimes it might be giving it to somebody else. Also, the more important, most perhaps uh, impacted by this, which is the flash memory. See, 
memory or storage has two parts one is permanent and one is non permanent non permanent would be like dynamic memory called dram and sram and so on and so forth once you turn the power off to the device whatever is stored in that memory goes away but permanent memory would be things like a tape um, hard disk drive and these days solid state drives the solid state drives have what is called as nand memory you could do other technologies but nand is the one that is prevalent and companies like samsung hynix micron western digital that is the sandisk portion of western digital even intel they are all manufacturing these devices these are the storage devices that also go into your smartphone so very very important technology semiconductor fast which is why the united states is now we're planning to give 128 billion dollars worth breaks for all these companies to bring their fabs home so to say you know bring our gods home bring our fabs home uh, the fabs were considered white elephants which is why they got put out to taiwan in the first place but with china rattling its saber i think us has said enough is enough which is why i'm saying that emperor xi is wearing no clothes and he will be that way very soon this is a very critical step that the united states is pondering i want to tell you what the importance of that step is now in terms of making equipment for these fabs there are two companies that are competing one is asml based out of netherlands and it's got a considerable amount of presence in the united states in in san diego and many many st st states and and together they make these uh, euv equipment they also make the duv these are considered the industry standard anybody who wants to expand their production fabs they would go and buy more duv euv equipment now it turns out that there are about 60 or 70 duv equipment that are supposed to be sold to china and the united states is impressing on its dutch friend from nato not to send them or not to sell them to china who is getting it in china one of the main companies is i think it's a yang ytme or something like that it's not important what i i will tell you in the next two slides what are the other consequences but asml is producing this fundamental technology or tools to to make to uh, make chips from uh, silicon you have the competing part uh, company called smee shanghai micro electronics equipment company and smee is trying to essentially uh, come up with its own equivalent of asml so china would be self sufficient in the tools that you have to make to give its own fabs which in turn will take designs from chinese companies and make final products you see how china is truly becoming atmanirbhar and 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 this is something that india should take uh, pay heed to any rate so what is happening next it is claim that sme has already done 7 nanometer process now many people are skeptical about it to understand the reality please read the references given in the description section of this video a lot of stuff i have put there because it takes a little bit of research to come up with something like this where i'm talking to you technology in a simple to understand way i hope it is simple to understand i would appreciate a comment or two from those of you who are not electronics engineers who are not engineers per se to say that yes we understand the importance of the semiconductors anyway so these these are the competing players sme is perhaps at least a decade or two away from becoming something more closer to asml but with the new screws being turned by the united states this is going to become a mirage in my opinion what are the companies that are now directly going to feel the heat because the united states is considering crack down on people such as companies such as samsung and hynix who are having fabs in china they basically are acknowledging what we have been telling all along that technology gets stolen even from tsmc to smic the equivalent of tsmc in mainland china we told you in a hangout with elmer how technology may have been appropriated so now what has happened is samsung has a fab in china and for that it will need equipment and what the united states is doing, telling asml is don't sell these equipment to samsung samsung will have to find a different way to make these things perhaps you know close down the fab in china and relocate to somewhere closer to home either south korea or in the united states 
Same goes for Hynix. Both Samsung and Hynix are leading NAND manufacturers. And what Hynix did was they bought an Intel fab in China recently. So Hynix is now unfortunately in the situation where now it would have to reconsider whether they need to take it from there and bring it to here or take it home to South Korea. Whatever it is, it's a problem. So both these companies are going to suffer at least some loss in throughput as far as NAND storage memory is concerned. Now, this is going to hurt their bottom line. It's also probably going to result in a loss in market store uh, market share and this is a very key storage part i told you right that all the if you, if you buy a, mem uh, a smartphone don't you say like i need 16 gig 32 gig memory that comes with the smartphone and the more you have memory on the smartphone the more uh, longer amount of videos that you can store there more pictures more videos more conversations more emails what have you until you have to go and clean it up Anyway, so these are very critical components which define how people will be using equipment for the future. We have to remember that today's smartphones are perhaps very, very short, uh, uh, shortly from now. The smartphone will be more powerful. It will be having more electronics than your laptop or desktop. For many, it is mind boggling that a small thing that you can carry in your hand has so much power. So we said that Samsung and Hynix could be the losers. China is the big loser because all doors leading to even possible theft of intellectual properties are being closed by the United States. So who are the gainers if this thing comes through and implements? And U.S. is pretty good once they make up its mind. Once it makes up, it, U.S. is pretty good at implementing what the government or the administration deems it to do. And it will happen. It will follow through it. And it will be a huge, huge problem for China. What are the companies that are going to gain from all this? Companies like Western Digital, which owns SanDisk now. SanDisk it was a premier in flash storage technology. They were the ones who proved the world that it was possible to make uh, flash cheaply and efficiently and very, very fast too. And then uh, Micron. Micron bought Samsung's competitor Lexar many years ago. Lexar was not a flash storage manufacturer, but you know they were they had skin in the game. So that's another company that will uh, be benefiting from this. Incidentally, one of the founders of uh, Sandisk, which has now become Western Digital, is now the CEO of Micron, Sanjay Mehrotra, a good friend of mine. Uh, and Intel. Intel has been manufacturing. Uh, flash, but it's not in the same league as Samsung, for example, which is considered the leader in uh, NAND flash storage. So long story short, semiconductor play, the United States is cracking the whip and Emperor Xi is going to really start feeling the heat. This is going to affect them for a long, long time. I have a feeling that this may be one of those things which is like a tipping point in this whole US-China relations. Thanks for watching. And also, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. If you think that this video was useful, please put in your comment. And also, don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. If you think the research here was useful to you and the references given, please consider donating using the Super Thanks button. Namaskar.